Hey everybody, this is Stephanie Lord from Pro Gun Women. I also have a radio show on Saturday called Pro Gun Women. It's on KIVA. That is 93.7 FM and AM 1600. And I'm here today because I want to talk to you about this new red flag bill that we have here in New Mexico. This is SB5 brought to you by Joseph Cervantes. And I want to cover some stuff that's in here in this bill. First thing you need to understand is when it says who can turn you in, that is a household member. The first part is household member. Spouse, former spouse, so it could be an ex. Even if you have a vindictive ex, they can turn you in. A present or former step parent or any in-laws, former or present, can turn you in. It also has listed here on page two, anyone you've dated. It doesn't say how far back that goes. Does it go back to high school? doesn't say. Just somebody that you dated can turn you in. So I'm thinking about this is especially from a woman's perspective. So you could have dated somebody and you found out they're a little bit crazy, so you stopped dating because they were a stalker. And I am, I am, I've been stalked in my life, and it's very scary. So this person that you stalked could technically, if they wanted to get back at you, or if they wanted to get you even more vulnerable, they could turn you in and your guns would have to be surrendered. You have no way to fight back on that at all. Nothing you can do. Now, the other person that it lists on here now is a law enforcement officer can also do a red flag on you. Same thing. They have the right now to go ahead and red flag you. So either one of those can go ahead and turn it in. What happens after that is they go ahead and they file. Now, in Florida, they have a, a, this could have the same issue that we're going to have. 90% of those are rubber stamped by the judge. So you make a complaint. The police officer writes it up, you do an affidavit, it goes to a judge. It's all immediate. That day has to happen. There's no investigation whatsoever. Boom, off to the judge. Are you going to be a judge that's not going to sign it and then something happened and somebody ends up harming themselves or others? You don't want to be that person. So you are just going to rubber stamp it and pass it on through. Now, something else that's very interesting on page five, that a law enforcement now has, um, can now get your health information. Information necessary for law enforcement to fulfill the requirements of extreme risk firearm protection. So they can get your health information, which is a violation of HIPAA. The person that files a complaint, nothing happens to them. They don't have to pay for the order. They don't pay for the warrant. They don't pay for witnesses. They don't pay for anything. They pay for nothing. And they've also made it in this bill that they cannot be charged with anything or you cannot sue them. Even if it's a false charge, sorry, too bad, you're out of luck. So, the law enforcement, when this works, this is all based on probable cause. Probable cause is the lowest standard that there is. It's, would a reasonable person think that this probably is true? There's a whole lot of probables in this. There's nothing definite. There's no, not necessarily any hard evidence whatsoever. It's just a probability. That's what they're going to base this on. So then this judge rubber stamps it. Then they're going to come. And they're going to come to your house with the warrant without you knowing. And they're going to show up and they're going to say, okay, we're here for all your guns. And you're not going to have any clue as to what is happening or why they're even there at your house. You're none. It's a surprise, especially if this comes at 3 o'clock in the morning. It's startling to have uh, law enforcement come to your house at 3 a.m. saying, give me your guns. Because you're going to wonder why. What did I do? After that, so you get no due process, period, end of story. None whatsoever. No due process. You don't get to cross-examine witnesses. You don't get to present your own findings. You don't get anything. There's no attorney. You don't even know this is happening. They just show up at your house. It's the first time you're ever going to know about it. Complete violation of the Bill of Rights. Okay? Then they come and they take your guns. There is no hearing until afterwards. Now, guess what this hearing is about? If you read this, the hearing is about are they going to extend it for a year or not. It's not whether you are innocent or not innocent. First of all, you are guilty. You are guilty until you can prove yourself innocent. This is the craziest thing. Our forefathers must be spinning in their grave over this. You are guilty until proven innocent. Now, guess what else you get to do? There's an attorney in California who has said that it's about $15,000, and by the way, I don't know, I forgot to mention, excuse me, <coughs> I'm just 
just getting over this cold. Oh, this has kicked me from behind for two weeks. Some of you know, some of you don't. My website is gone. It's just poof gone. So I am rebuilding that and it's taking some time. I'm going to put all this information on here. This you, You'll be able to find this bill. And I also have seven different reasons of why the red flag is a horrible failure in the United States. Not just here, but across the nation. So this attorney, uh, he's a California attorney who handles these. His name is Donald Kilmer. I said it's $15,000. 15000 for you to go to court, and you cannot carry a gun. You can, there's, you absolutely have no gun until you go back and prove yourself as not guilty. So you have to pay an attorney, and you have to pay a therapist who has to come forward and say, this person is not a harm to themselves or others. So you have the burden of proof to prove your innocence, which is complete and utter insanity. Now, if you violate this, it's a misdemeanor. However, that is can be up to one year in jail and a thousand dollar fine. So it's not like, oh, it's just a misdemeanor. No, it, it, you could spend a year in jail. Everything is an accusation. They actually use the word on page nine, allegation. So they're saying allegedly you may pose a threat to harm or other yourself or others. This is under the ex parte section. Ex parte means you're you have no part of this you don't even know what's going on you just you don't you have no clue so they're gonna they're gonna send this warrant out with probable cause you're gonna get served with a warrant they're going to come and take your guns it says they advise you to seek an attorney which you have to pay for this is not criminal by the way this is civil this is criminal if it was criminal you would get an uh, attorney appointed to you and there would do, be due process but this is civil this is how they're going around this so after what they're going to do after the 15 days then they're going to say well should we extend this to a year that's all this is it's just you have to prove that they should not take this away from you for one year so it goes through um different things that will get in trouble like you can't have any types of weapons um, you can do a written request within that one year to get another hearing, and again, that's another $15,000. Matter of fact, this attorney says it can cost you up to $100,000 on appeals to win your case. The main thing I want you to understand is that when they submit for this, is on page 17, the search warrant, this is where they're going to come in and take all of your weapons. If they find out afterwards that somebody snitches you out and says, oh, you still have a gun or weapon, they're going to go back in and get another warrant to take anything else. And this includes ammunition. You cannot have ammunition, and it must be surrendered immediately. This is, I, I, sometimes I just, I absolutely just can't believe what I'm reading. I just can't, I, I this is the Michael Bloomberg, George Soros agenda. This is what, and I've spoken to people all over New Mexico, and they don't want this. Nobody wants this. This is some sort of crazy progressive ideology, and Lujan has lost it. She no longer speaks for the people. She's doing all kinds of crazy things. Even people in her own party have said, she is does not represent me. She has lost it. So... What do we do next? Because this is really, this is really important. Super important to our Bill of Rights, super important to gun owners. You know, even the ACLU and Rhode Island is against this and made a statement over this. You know, the other thing it does, it gives you false hope. It gives a lot of women false hope. Oh, they've taken his guns. He can't hurt me now. Or, oh, I think so-and-so was suicidal. Well, they took their guns. So magically, they have no other way to kill themselves. We are not addressing the problem. We're not addressing the problem at all. We are not saying, like there's a document that I'm going to go through and read that I found. It's based on intimate partner violence. And I'm going to read all through this because the startling part of all of this that I read, well, I just skimmed through it, is that the majority of women right here, 75% of spouse-on-spouse -spouse assaults, the victim was divorcing or separated at the time of the incident. 
Women who leave their batterers are at a 75% greater risk of being killed by the batterer. So in other words, you get killed when you leave the person beating you. That's when they kill you. And I feel like the liberal agenda is like, well, you don't need a gun. They don't need a gun. Everyone will just hold hands and hug it out. Oh, and as a woman, you should change your name and move out of the city and do all these things and jump through hoops to avoid this person. No, I have a different approach on that. Learn how to protect yourself, which may include, for some of you, carrying a weapon at all times to defend yourself and your children. I have a very different perspective on this. And it scares me that a, and I'm not being sexist because men do get abused. And I, I'm going to correct myself right here. It's not fair to anyone who has been beaten, been abused, and they're leaving this partner. And that partner knows, wow, if I call the police and I get a red flag on them first, if I get a restraint on them first, I'll get their weapons taken away from them, leaving them totally vulnerable. And it's vindictive because they know how much money it's going to cost. And you're not going to have that money to get your guns back. This bill is so unfair. It is absolutely unbelievable. By the way, this is an interesting stat because I'm, I'm, I'm a statistics fanatic. That's why I get so mad at the moms demand action. Everything that comes out of their mouth pretty much is a lie or a twisted or false stat. But this is a real stat. 1.5 million false or trivial temporary restraining orders are filed every year. How many red flags do you think are going to get filed? How many is okay and how many is not okay? One is not okay. So no, this can be completely abused. We need to bring out awareness on what exactly this bill is. We can't, t I know a lot of people say, well, we need to sue to get it off the books. We can't until somebody's injured in this. It has to be a good lawsuit. It has to go to the Supreme Court, and it's a lot of money to get there. Things you can do. I'm always putting on, on my Facebook and on Twitter, which I'm um, pro-gun women on Facebook and at pro-gun women on Twitter. Constantly putting on blasts of what we can do to fight back. Emails, phone calls, letters, rallying people, gathering people. I need veterans to step up. I need veterans to really get involved in this because when they say red flag and they say the word veteran or biker, oh, guaranteed they're going to go ahead and, and send this off. That Because you, you're definitely going to be a harm to yourself or others. So we need to consider the fact that it's going to target certain people, which is complete and utter prejudice. The other big thing we have on Friday, January 31st at 11 o'clock, where I want to have the biggest pro-gun rally that has ever been in the history of New Mexico. I want everybody to show up. And look, this is for everybody. And we have a lot of Democrats that are conservative, gun-toting um, people that are welcome at this event. If you are for the Second Amendment and you're against Red Flag and all these other nonsense bills... I want you there. It doesn't matter who you are. You can be gay or straight or Democrat or Republican. I don't care. I want you to show up. I want your voice to be heard. This is absolutely important. We need everyone to be there, rain or shine. So I'm going to have a few people speak. We're going to rally. We're going to go to, I'm ordering a big poster uh, with the Bill of Rights to take to Lujan. We're going to go deliver it to her office because obviously she doesn't know what it is. Never read it or probably just doesn't care. We're going to deliver it anyways. We're going to have a bunch of signatures out there for petitions. We're going to have people signing, you know, saying we don't agree with her. And then I want everyone to go to their representative's office. I'm going to help you find those. And you go to your rep's office and you tell them. You go right in their office and say, I do not agree with this. I do not want you. There's strength in numbers. We have to stick together, all of us. Republican, Democrat, re different religious beliefs. I don't care. All I care about is one issue. Will you defend and protect the Second Amendment in its entirety. That means no infringement, period, end of story. I need your help. I really do. I need you to get the word out there um, and tell people. If you want to help, if you want to make a donation, because my website is down, you can send uh, to PayPal, info at progunwomen.org. If you want to buy a shirt, they are $20 or more. Uh, all donations are greatly appreciated. My website, I'm going to work on that this weekend, is progunwomen.org. And I hope to see you there. If you have any questions, please let me know. And everyone have a great day. Remember, always wear red on Friday to remember everyone deployed. Thank you.